Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Los Angeles City Council meeting for Friday, February 16th, 2007. We are meeting in John Ferraro Council Chambers, room 340 of City Hall. We welcome members of the public who have joined us today and our special guests who are here for Friday presentations. We also want to welcome our viewers on Channel 35. We are uh, shown live on Channel 35 through the city's cable system on LA City View, your city channel, um, every uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. for our council meetings. And we are rebroadcast in the evening. Um, we also are available online through our city's homepage at lacity.org, where you can click on links to get to live web uh, cast of all of our council meetings. And lastly, if you're not close to a computer or a television, you can always call Council Phone, which is an audio service of the uh, city in which you can listen to the um, proceedings of the Los Angeles City Council or any of our committee meetings um, by calling 213-621-CITY. We invite members of the public here to give public testimony for items that have been agendized for public comment or for general public comments um, on items that are under our jurisdiction but not on the agenda. If you'd like to read one of our agendas in advance to see what's on the schedule, you can log on to lacity.org, uh, visit the city clerk's office here in City Hall, or we have agendas in the back of the room here and posted up for your convenience. We usually have council ambassadors, local high school students who can help you navigate the ins and outs of uh, city council if it's your first time here or if you have any questions. Um, and we also uh, recommend that you visit the city's homepage for uh, information about your elected officials and uh, departments and other um, services to improve the quality of your life, again, at lacity.org. Um, we also have remote facility available at Van Nuys City Hall, so you can testify if you live closer to Van Nuys from Van Nuys, and we are able to watch you here on our video monitors and on Channel 35. And the first Friday of the month, we meet in uh, Van Nuys City Hall, and so we invite you to join us there uh, in our efforts to bring City Council closer to all Angelinos, and I know that we're going to be down in San Pedro soon as well, um, with part of our um, City Council on the Road meetings. Uh, I want to thank the Council members who are here uh, pursuant to Council rules on time. Council members Cardenas, Gruel, Labange, Perry, Wesson, and Zine. We are still awaiting a few other Council members, but as is custom on Friday, we like to celebrate uh, notables uh, in our city family and in the larger city, um, and we want to welcome all of the guests that are here for that. I'd like to recognize for our first presentation this Friday, uh, the President Pro Tem of the City Council and Council Member from the Second Council District, Wendy Gruel. Good morning, uh, Mr. President, and thank you so much uh, for the time this morning. And I'm pleased to and come up close to introduce some people today. Um, as you can see, we're all wearing red um, for the Go Red for Women campaign with the American Heart Association. And on, on Wednesday, um, I know these two ladies were up at the crack of dawn as, as I was uh, there uh, early at the MTA station um, trying to encourage uh, women who were, and men, uh, who were coming off the public transportation system to uh, talk about heart disease among uh, women. And I just want to give you some uh, statistics. We're here to educate women about um, their heart health. Not enough as, of us are aware that heart disease is the nation's number one killer of men, or t that it takes the life of a woman every 60 seconds. And we were chatting the other day, because um, we were there for a couple hours together uh, that morning, uh, which is, you know, you see those TV shows and others where you have the, the guys usually, you know, clutching their heart and they fall, and, uh, and the, there's never that picture of that women um, have heart attacks and have heart disease, and it's the number one killer. Um, when we think of this, we show that women, uh, more women than men have died of heart disease in the last few years. And these women are of all ages. They are sisters, daughters, mothers, and their friends. The Go Red for Women campaign is making real inroads in teaching women about the dangers of heart disease. According to a new uh, published study in the Journal of Women's Health, 57% of women now know that heart disease is a leading cause of death. But the study also finds that among minority women, there has not been a significant increase in, in awareness in the last decade. We have a long way to go. I'm here today to remind women that we need to take better care of our hearts. We need to make sure that we exercise. 
If you smoke, you need to quit smoking. We need to make sure we eat right. And we all need to get regular checkups with our doctors. And we can also take the first simple step by going to www.goforredwomen.org to take the Go for Red, uh, excuse me, Go Red Heart Checkup. Um, the American Heart Association has been incredibly, I think, creative in ensuring that we get the message out. Uh, Valentine's Day is one that we uh, think about hearts. And so there they were all day making sure that on Valentine's Day that not only the women but the men who love them were out there thinking about living longer by taking care of their heart. And so we are here today to continue that educational effort and hope uh, that you will talk to your wives and sisters um, and, and daughters and friends and let them know that they need, need to take good care of their heart. And so today, um, we have a couple people, and I'd like to introduce them uh, to say a few words. Um, Claudia Keller, uh, who is the HAA Executive Director for Los Angeles, Dora Gill, um, and uh, we'll make sure uh, that I think Bob Larley is our, we were looking for some other board members that should be here, uh, but I'd um, like to ask them to say a few words before we make the presentation. Yes, yes. And so just before that, I'd like to call on Council Member Rosendahl to add a couple good wishes as well. Yeah. Uh, good morning. I do have the red on, and, and those of you who watched my television show over the years, I always did a segment on this because women and heart disease is huge, and yet there's very little awareness. And one of the biggest problems was when a woman went to the emergency room or to her doctor and outlined what her issue was, they were thinking of the diagnosis that a man goes through and not what a woman goes through. So many times they misdiagnosed and therefore mistreated. So um, awareness is the key. Uh, and I'm just honored to be here to be honoring. And uh, John Harold, uh, Dr. John Harold, um, they gave me that award, you know, years ago um, because we put the awareness out there. And he's being honored this year, John Harold is. So I want to thank you all for everything you're doing. Uh, I want to thank John Harold for his leadership and constant force. He's a great physician and uh, a wonderful hospital at Cedar sinai But thank you all for bringing it before us. And I'll wear this red, and all day long we'll make it awareness as much as possible. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Rosendahl. Uh, Mr. Labange. Mr. President, Mr. Rosenthal, it's not just wearing red, it's walking red. Walking red so your heart beats and moves. And I just want to thank you for your work all along. Ms. Gruel, thank you for bringing this very important group in about our hearts. I know there's some city champs who are going to be on it here who had great heart in their efforts to win the city title this year, which is great. But exercise is so important. And the simple exercise that has to get in our patterns as we wake up in the morning, that we move our bodies, that we move our heart, will make a world of difference, plus all the diet things that go. But the simple thing of walking, which is so important. So I just want to salute you, Miss Gruel, for the red. I did not have red on, but I went down to 9th Street, and I picked it up at a nice tie shop down there for $7.92. So <laughs> thank you, Miss Perry. They said hello, and they said thank you for cleaning up the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Labange. And I'm, I'm sure it's a real Armani. Don't worry. <laughs> Ms. Gruel. Thank you. And, and we do have um, uh, pins for all of you to wear. Um, if you did not bring, I know I saw Mr. Zine put on his red pin and his, yep, uh, he's got red all over his uh, thing. But he uh, is going to make sure he lets people know today wearing red. So it's, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Claudia. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank um, Council Member Gruel for her incredible enthusiasm and spirit. As she mentioned, she was up with us at 5.30 in the morning on Wednesday, so that's amazing perseverance. So thank you very much for championing our mission here in Los Angeles. Um, to let you all know, we will be doing blood pressure screenings and BMI screenings with our amazing partner, Kaiser Permanente, out in the rotunda till about noon today. So it's always good to know your numbers, have your blood pressure checked. Please join us out in the rotunda. And I want to remind you, unlike Wednesday, t last night I got a very good night's sleep and most of you look incredibly well rested. But while you were sleeping last night, your heart pulled an all-nighter. Don't forget that. Thank you. On behalf of the American Heart Association, I want to thank you, uh, the Los Angeles City Council, for your continued support on this important issue. Thank you very much.
Thank you. And um, please go. I, I, uh, I won't tell you what my BMI was, um, but I did have it tested on uh, Wednesday. Um, and so I'll be working hard. And Ms. Ms. Hahn, you look beautiful in red today. So go red for, for women who is here. Um, thank you very much, Mr. President, and please, uh, everyone, uh, encourage the people to take care of their heart, and uh, particularly our women uh, here in the city of Los Angeles. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Ms. Gruel. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Cardenas Gruel, Hahn, Wizar, Labange, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Rosenel, Smith, Weiss, Wiss, and Zine Garcetti, 10 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. Okay, before continuing with our presentations, colleagues, I think we'll run through the agenda. Can direct your attention in the first items, please. Approval of the minutes. Ms. Gruel moves, and I second. If there's no objection, unanimously approved. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Mr. Zine moves, and Mr. Wesson seconds. If no objection, those two will be approved. Next order of business. On Let's the regular agenda, Mr. President, mm -hmm. items notice for public hearing. Item number one is a street lighting uh, district ordinance, uh, excuse me, street lighting district hearing 1913 act. And uh, council can close the hearing and then continue uh, this matter for ballot uh, results okay. on uh, March, March 7th. 7th. All right, if there's no objection to that, we'll go ahead and close the hearing and continue that until March 7th. Next item. Items two through seven are street lighting districts and council can open the hearing and continue the hearings and ordinances to March 7th. Okay, if there's no objection, colleagues, we will go ahead and open those hearings and continue the ordinances till the 7th. I'm oh, sorry, is it open or close or close? Uh, you can uh, continue the hearing on okay, that one. we'll continue the hearings on those. Next items? Items 8 through 14 are items for which public hearings have been held. On uh, item 14, the committee report has been submitted. And on uh, 10 and 11, new reports have been submitted with a correction on them, and that should have been a federal legislative program, and that's been corrected on the reports. Okay. With that correction, any specials? Ms. Gruel? Oh. Yeah, Ms. Gruel. <laughs> Um, item uh, number nine, I believe, will continue it for one week. Okay, um, that would be till um, the, 28th, the 23rd. 23rd, excuse me. Okay. Um, right. And call item uh, number 14, special. Okay. I know we did submit that. And we, everything may be fine, uh, but I want to call it special okay. just to make sure. Yeah, Mr. Wieser. Number 12, and I think we have we uh, request a reopening of the hearing, if possible. Okay. We'll call that special, and we'll. Move that if there's no objection when it comes to the hearing. Any other specials, colleagues? Let's hold eight on the desk, too, in case we have 12 members. Go ahead and open the roll on the balance, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Ten aye. Those are approved. Next items, please. Next items are items for which public hearings have not been held, items 15 through 39. Okay, do we have any cards on those? I don't have any record of any cards as yet. Okay. Let's go ahead and we'll open the public uh, hearing. I'm sorry, on 27 there's a card. 27. We'll call that special for card from the public. On the others, we'll open and close the public hearings. Any specials, colleagues? So, all right. Let's hold the ordinances on the desk until we have 12 members. And on the balance, that's 24 through 26 and 28 through 39. We'll go ahead and open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. Next item, please. Uh, next item, Mr. President, would be on the special meeting. Do you wish to recess and yes, go into that? Please call the roll on the special meeting. Cardenas, Gruel, Hahn, Wieser, Labange, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Rosenel, Smith, Weiss, West, and Zion Garcetti. Ten members present and a quorum, Mr. President. Okay. First item, please. First item is item number 40, and that's an item for which public hearing has been held. Okay. Anybody wishing to call 40 special from the council? 40 is the first implementation agreement with the Colburn School. Okay. If not, we'll open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Eleven ayes. That is approved. Next items. Next items are items for which public hearings have not been held, 41 through 43. Ten votes are required for consideration. I believe there are cards on all those. Okay. I have cards on 41 and 43. Do we have a 42 as well? Um, yes, I see 42 as well. We'll call all those. All special for cards from the public. And uh, that'll take us. We can continue those back into the regular meeting, please. And we'll return to our presentations. And I'd like to recognize the Assistant President Pro Tem and Councilwoman from the 9th District, Jan Perry. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I'd like uh, for all those who are involved with the Manual Arts Engineering Program 
uh, local industry representatives, and of course, their teacher, John Santos. So please join me at the podium. Everybody pile on. And then I'll try to say my introduction, let you speak first, and then try to keep it to a minute. And they, if they all want to say something, they can just keep it to a minute. Okay. we got six minutes to do it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Everybody take their visitor's badges off. Come on up. Come close. Come close. Come close. <laughs> Fill in the gaps. Come on. Come on in. Come on in. Take your badge off. You okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, of course. Good. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. President. It's, this is an amazing uh, gathering of private industry supporting the lives of young people from Manual Arts High School. And I'm standing here with one of the premier teachers of Manual Arts High School in the field of engineering, and his name is John Santos. So let's give him a very big hand. And standing behind me are all of the individuals from Boeing, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and the United States Coast Guard who stand in support of the students who are studying engineering at Manual Arts High School. These technological and engineering-based organizations have distinguished themselves throughout the city of Los Angeles because they have taken the time to provide support to this school and the young people of this community. And their volunteerism has improved the quality of life for the young people of Manual Arts High School. They have a deep commitment to the engineering program and teacher John Santos and the students of Manual Arts High School. By putting in resources to mentor, tutor, and sponsor students, they have provided these young people with an opportunity that they might not have otherwise had. It has also given these young people a competitive edge when they finish their education and get out there in the world to compete. Their competitive edge in the areas of FIRST Robotics, JPL Invention Challenge, Solar Boat Races, JETS Teams National en en Engineering Exam, Mesa Day Competitions, and the National Science Bowl, and the National Engineering Design Competition. With the support of these organizations, the students, the alumni, have established footholds in engineering schools such as Cal State LA, Cal Poly Pomona, University of California, University of California Berkeley and Merced, and Yale University. Their commitment to the education of these young people is truly an inspiration and one that all those who work in companies in the city of Los Angeles could do and should do without even having to be asked. This is a great asset to our community and I wanted to recognize them for taking that extra step. Now I just want to say very quickly because they're so kind uh, to have come again on the names of their team and I'm going to ask teacher Santos to speak. Raytheon represented by Kevin Neifert, uh, Melvin Jackson, Jack Otero, uh, Gus Bo Bojorquez, Perlin Lau, Aaron Smith, Leslie Joe, Lockheed Martin, Rick Baker, ba Robert Bob uh, McPherson, Shirley Harbison, Manny Sanchez, Northrop Grumman, Clara Lau, Jim Hart, Nelson Lau, David Clement, Sonia Loveless, Jensen Lau, U.S. Coast Guard, Captain Jim Summer, Boeing, Arturo Rosales, Mina Martinez, C Cesar Guerra, and then a few good words from our teacher, John Santos. Thank you very much, council members. Um, I brought a little document to share with you that basically um, explains some of the things that our students are involved with. But uh, just to share a few accomplishments that the students have done with the help of these companies and their employees, uh, we have been able to come up with a few firsts, including we are the first inner city school uh, to qualify three years in a row for the Science Bowl. Um, our students last year finished third in the state in the national engineering exam, setting a new state record for, for the score on a technical document of 97, and that team was led by an ESL student. We have all these accomplishments we can talk about. Some of them are in that, that document that's being handed to you. Uh, but uh, we couldn't have done it without the support of these companies and other companies just like them. And this is just a small portion 
of the people that support our students. And it, we are trying to change the way students feel about math and science in South Central Los Angeles. And with the help of these companies and their employees, uh, we are we have a, a we're doing everything possible to, to to create that change. And with these companies, it's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, John. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I think that uh, a few of the reps just want to take a quick second to say something. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Okay. Okay. Let me speak. Yep. Councilwoman Perry and honorable members of the LA City Council, I'm uh, Kevin Neifert. I'm the Vice President of Engineering. And on behalf of Raytheon, we'd like to thank you for giving us this recognition. Appreciate that. Um, Manual Arts High School has provided a vehicle for students to excel in, in personal academics, math, and science. And we have supported them consistently with funding throughout the years. And so to receive this award is a great honor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, go ahead and ask. Uh, Councilman Perry, Council, uh, guest. On behalf of Lockheed Martin, we'd like to say thank you very much for this honor. It's very important to us. Uh, we believe in giving back to the community, uh, the network of friends that makes this happen. Uh, our company alone has donated uh, their valuable time and assets of over a million dollars in volunteer services to the communities at large. We continue to believe this. This is our mandate. We want to improve the uh, I want to say the social status of all the students, and with this, we do this with our heart, and we do it without being asked to do so. So, thank you very much for this honor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm Clara Lau, and we have Jim Hartman, manager of communications of Northrop Grumman. Um, I would say that the JPL Invention Challenge is the type of activity that Northrop Grumman wishes to promote among our youth. Our intent at Northrop Grumman is to serve as a role model. This year's regional was different than any other regional because this was the opportunity for the students to visit the mini career fair set up by the participating companies. Northrop Grumman was pleased to set up to help with the mini career uh, fair, which allowed the high school students a chance to see the types of technical jobs and education opportunities that are available to them. We appreciate and thank JPL for taking the initiative to provide the vehicle for all the participating companies to be able to give back to the community. And I'm also wearing red in support of uh, the Day for Women. My name is Art Rosales, uh, Director of Program Services at Boeing. Uh, I've known John Santos for many years and uh, can say with, without a doubt and any reservation that the work he's doing uh, stands as a role model and an example that other uh, teachers and schools should emulate. Uh, all of us here, Boeing and all the other organizations represented, know that an educated and diverse workforce is the key to corporate success in the future and this type of work is very important not only for the students and not only for corporations but for the welfare of our country. Thank you very much. Good morning, uh, honorable council members. Uh, we are, the United States Coast Guard is actually very proud to be able to participate in this uh, inner city program. Uh, I'd like to thank John Santos and, and all the other industry partners here um, this gives us really an opportunity to bring some great math and science to this community, and we look forward to supporting it. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Is that it? Okay. Every uh, high school in the city should have a support group like this, and uh, we'd be a lot further along in helping the kids uh, uh, achieve greater uh, quality of life and a higher level of whatever they choose for their future. Thank you. And we have a couple council members that want to add their good wishes, Mr. Cardenas and Mr. Labange. I think it's, it's appropriate that the city of Los Angeles recognize and thank John Santos and the team of people who are actually helping these young people overcome barriers. I became an engineer and the first job I had in that arena was when I was graduating from San Fernando High School here in Los Angeles and I got my first summer job working around men and women who are dressed up in business attire, suits and ties and all those kinds of things. Coming from Pacoima where my father was a gardener and my aunts and uncles were also doing those types of labor jobs, I didn't rub elbows nor did I recognize or understand that the people wearing suits and ties were professionals yet at the same time so was my father 
but this is the same thing. It's about going to work, taking a good work ethic, and finding your place, and doing a great job, and being commended for it, and rewarded for it by making a career. So I think it's very important for people to understand, for those people who come from affluent communities and don't realize it, for a poor kid to walk into a room full of professionals dressed like that, talking the way they talk, and maybe looking very different from you, it is very, very intimidating. And the best way I can describe it is, if you've ever seen a person, young or old, go up in front of a crowd and have to make a speech, and then sometimes they just look at the crowd and they walk away. That is what happens to many of our children when you tell them, you can be an astronaut, you can be an engineer, you can be a doctor, you can be a teacher. They may be exposed to that, but without the right kind of support, they may just turn around and walk away. So it's very important that you picture, if you will, if the camera can pan to the people we're thanking today, this is the backing of those children when they walk in the room. It's just this picture. All of your faces, all of your smiley faces, all of your expertise, and all of the love and commitment that you're willing to say, hey kid, you can do it. And we're going to put you in our environment, and we're going to put our arm around you and say, you know what, you're going to be doing this just like me. And as a matter of fact, those of us who are honest, the fact that they get to do it when they're 16, 17 years old, 18 years old, means that they're going to do a better job than we did because we didn't have that opportunity. So thank you all very, very much for breaking barriers for our children. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Labange. Hey, uh, Mr. Cardenas, thank you for uh, your remarks as well as I follow Ms. Perry. Thank you for bringing everybody together. I benefited in Los Angeles uh, because of a Saturday skills class that they had, and I was going to be a printer. That was one of my dreams at the time. But being working in a print shop, and believe it or not, the print shop was down on Vermont Avenue, right around the corner from Mr. Garcetti's grandfather. He just showed me a picture this morning, and I used to get a sandwich right next to it. It's amazing how it goes, right up the street from Manuel. And the whole thing is because you took time, those behind in the podium there, to get engaged, because it's someone's grabbing to help you. Just like those who coach or teach, you take time from industry to come back, and it's so important, Ms. Perry. Thank you for honoring them. Uh, Ms. Gruel had the American Heart Society, her Heart Association, excuse me, here moments ago. All of you have great heart for what you're doing for young people. You're making a difference. Thank you very much. I stand to salute you and ask if you have five extra minutes, because it's such a beautiful day and it will inspire you. Go up to the Tom Bradley Tower before you leave the building and look over this great city and know that you're making a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. And for the audience who may be watching, just so you know, five rows of the council chamber were taken up by these corporate supporters of Manual Arts High School and their teacher, John Santos. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Madam Clerk, if we can take the uh, ordinances now that we have 12 members, that would be uh, items 8 and then 15 through 23. Okay. Okay, please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Those are approved. 11 ayes, 1 no. All righty, we, we have uh, next uh, Council Member Jose Wizar from the 14th District. Thank Those you will very go much, over Mr. President and colleagues, public. This presentation acknowledges one of the finest high school jazz groups in the nation, the Eagle Rock High School Jazz Band. Welcome.
Thank you very much. What a wonderful performance. And colleagues, public, you know that jazz holds a special place in the pantheon of musical genres. And here we have a group of wonderful young people showing their talents that are keeping alive the soul of America by blending African-American musical styles along with Western theory and technique. And they're doing a great job at that. But even more so, many of you know that jazz requires improvisation, and these students rely on one another and support one another as they go forward in each rendition. 
And to perform that, they need to uh, follow each other's lead and also to show group, to show, uh, group uh, practice and teamwork. They're doing a wonderful work. And for that, I want to recognize not only these students, but their teacher who is keeping jazz alive in Northeast Los Angeles and at Eagle Rock High School. At this time, I'd like to ask Eagle Rock Jazz Band's musical director to accept, on behalf of the city of Los Angeles, a certificate of recognition to you and your group, Greg Samuel, for the wonderful work you're doing to show and showcase these students' talents and to keeping jazz alive in our high schools. Thank you so much. Thank you, President. Mr. President, uh, members of the council, it's our true honor to be here today. Um, jazz is such an important language. It's America's classical music. Um, it's so important that we, we support it and um, we work with it and we, we teach our children how to play it. And um, it's, it's, we've gotten amazing support from the city of Los Angeles, from the city of Eagle Rock, um, from the area of Eagle Rock, and uh, from, from everybody that we, we come in contact with. It's a pleasure to work with everybody. And, and, and thank you again uh, for, for recognizing us today. I, I also want to um, recognize Mr. John, the late, Mr. the late great Mr. John Ronaldo, who started the, uh, the Eagle Rock Jazz Program in the 1960s and um, really laid the groundwork for what we do today. And it's, uh, it's, again, it's an honor to continue his work. So thank you for, for letting us be here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And students, you're doing a wonderful job. You guys are talented. Keep it up. And uh, thank you for bringing us this pleasure you brought us today. And you will continue to do so as you move forward in your musical careers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Rizar. Our next uh, three presentations, um, oh, sorry, we need to reconsider on the vote. Could somebody inadvertently pressed a no on those ordinances. So let's go ahead and reconsider those ordinances. And that's 8, 15 through 23. Yes. First, open the roll on reconsideration, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Thank you. If you can add item 14 to that as well, that's been cleared up, those issues. We can take those together. Can we, can we vote on the same time or we want to do it separately? Okay, let's take this roll, open the roll. Let me take this batch, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 aye. Thank you. And item 14, if we can take that real quick. Please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 12 aye. That is approved as well. Thank you. Uh, next three up are, are Council Members Wesson, then Mr. Rosendahl, and then Mr. Labonge. Wesson, Rosendahl, and then Labonge. Mr. Wesson. Hey, good morning, uh, Mr. President and members. I have a very shy little girl dog named Misha who is looking for a home. Today is my favorite day, kids. This is Pet Adoption Friday. Just last weekend, we, um, in fact, Mr. Labonge, why don't you just give me a hand and hold Misha? Just last, uh, what a hound dog. <laughs> she's a mixed shepherd. And she's slightly over a year. She's looking for a home. This past uh, Saturday, <coughs> all of our animal shelters, we declared a no-kill uh, weekend. I urge anybody who wants a nice companion animal to please adopt Misha. If Misha's already adopted, we have hundreds of wonderful animals at our shelters. Uh, to date, Every animal that we have brought to city council has been adopted. If we do not adopt these dogs, they will be put down. So please save, save a life. 
help yourself live longer by having a, a, a pet that will give you unconditional love. Again, Misha is a mixed shepherd. She will not get any bigger than this. This is as big as Misha will get. She's been spayed. She's been microchipped. She's ready to go home with you right now. Anyone that's interested, please call 888-452-7381. Let's give Misha a home. Okay, Misha, come on, take, take a picture with Dad. Thank you very much, Mr. Wesson. And if anybody here in council chambers is interested, please let uh, Mr. Wesson or his staff know as well. Beautiful dog. Thank you so much. And uh, next, I'd like to recognize Mr. Rosendahl for next presentation. Good morning, um, colleagues, um, Mr. President, and the great public that is watching this out there. This is another engineering week, and I've got to tell you something. I'm learning, as does everybody else uh, who's in the government, and I'd like to give you a little history here, folks. Engineer Week 2007. Next week, February 18th through February 24th, the City of Los Angeles will join engineering organizations throughout the nation in celebrating National Engineers Week. The theme of this year's celebration is Engineers Make a World of Difference. And being Chair of Public Works, it's a real honor for me to be doing this, and I gotta tell you that they do make a world of difference. The Bureau of Engineering, led by City Engineer Gary Lee Moore, where's Gary, let's give him a round of applause, <laughs> is involved in the design and construction of facilities essential to the modern life of the City of Los Angeles. The Bureau of Engineering does the following designs and constructs the city's libraries, community facilities, recreation buildings, parks, fire stations, police stations, animal shelters, and zoo buildings. The Bureau of Engineers designs and constructs bridges, streets, sewers, pumping plants, and wastewater treatment plants. The Bureau of Engineers designs and constructs flood control and stormwater pollution abatement projects. It also regulates private development affecting the public right-of-way. The Bureau of Engineer has over 635 active projects currently in design or being built, representing 4.4 billion in construction. Since July 1, 2006, Bureau of Engineer has awarded 62 new construction contracts for $330 million. They're really doing the most amazing work. Bless you all for that. This year, the Los Angeles Council of Engineers and Scientists honor the Bureau of Engineering staff and projects with six awards. These include the very special recognition for two city engineers as an architect. Alex uh, Vitaragosa. Did I say that somewhat nice? <laughs> Vitaragosa. Okay, yeah, almost Vitaragosa is, is the re recipient of the George Washington Engineer of the Year Award as a result of his extraordinary career accomplishment. And Dale Williams and Jensen Wu are the recipients of the Outstanding New Engineer Award. Just a word or two about these two uh, gentlemen here. Uh, in 1974, Alex and four other Hispanic engineers in the Bureau of Engineering began conceptualizing on establishing a professional organization for the Hispanic engineers. As a result, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers was born in 1974. Thank you for doing that, for creating that. He has a career with the city of Los Angeles for over 37 years. One of his major accomplishments was to lead the effort of the seismic bond program after passage of Proposition G by the voters in 1990. He spearheaded the $176 million bridge rehabilitation and retrofit program. He was instrumental on completion of the FEMA building retrofit program for 145 city buildings, including police, fire, and general service facilities. Under his leadership, 250 million East Central Interceptor Sewer Project, essentially a structural tunnel, was designed in-house. Thank you for everything you've done for us. 
And Jensen, get a load of this, has utilized the sustainable building design and green construction material research for many in-house design projects. As a part of the design team for the recently accomplished 19,500 square foot Boyle Heights Technology Youth Center, Jensen has shown great interest in implementing sustainable strategies for architectural design in buildings. A whole lot of good things on Greeny. Where are you? Come on, over here. Let's give him a round of applause, too. Before I present the certificate, I'd like to have my two colleagues. We have an engineer with Tony Cardenas, and we have the former chair of Public Works, Greg Smith, who's been actively involved to say a few words. Thank you. This is an opportunity for us to recognize engineers, but more importantly, believe it or not, engineers have heart. You probably think of engineers or people who are too busy with their numbers, too busy with their used to be protractors, now calculators. But at the same time, when you really get right down to it, when you look at these beautiful buildings, yes, part of it's architecture, but an architect can't get the job done unless the engineers agree that structurally, this is the way it can be done, and you can still make it beautiful. One of the things I'd like to point out that we should be very blessed in this country is that this country is built on a good foundation of engineering. You could look right here in the city of Los Angeles. Unfortunately, on any given day, as has occurred in 1994 in the San Fernando Valley in 1971, we could have a 7% magnitude earthquake. In almost any other part of the world, you will see, unfortunately, thousands of lives lost. Yet here in Los Angeles, because of the engineering standards and the wonderful work that we have and the standards that we have here in Los Angeles and throughout this country, fortunately, the loss of lives is in the dozens at most. I think it's very important for people to understand that engineers are making our lives safe and when disaster strikes, millions of lives are saved because of these wonderful people. And I'd, before I turn it over to my colleague Greg Smith, I'd like to give an extra thank you to these men who it, it was just pointed out that they are responsible, very much responsible for my success in obtaining my engineering degree, which was my dream when I was a little boy. They started SHIP. SHIP gave me scholarships every single year that I went to college. Excellent. So I just want to say, once again, engineers have heart. They're not just about numbers, they're about community. And I think it's fitting that in this engineering week that the city of Los Angeles, and thank you so much, my colleague Rosendahl, thank you so much for bringing it to this level so that people can understand what wonderful engineers do for us. Thank you. Amen. Great, 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 great. Now, I'm pleased to stand here with my colleagues, Mr. Rosendahl and Mr. Cardenas, to pay tribute to our engineers. You know, so often we forget that in Los Angeles, we've had a number of very, very big projects that we've had to ask the voters for their permission to borrow money and spend money, their taxes, and increase their taxes in a way to build things for this community. Uh, the most vibrant one is uh, our library program a couple years ago. We approved money to build 32 libraries. These engineers did such an efficient job that they brought them all in so far under budget that we had enough money left to build four additional libraries without any additional taxes based on what the uh, engineers did. And they do that all the time. And they touch our lives every single day, from the wastewater projects and Hyperion that they design and build, all the way up to our rec recreation and parks, our new pools that are being built for the first time in years. We're actually building pools again in Los Angeles. Uh, they do an incredible job. And I've always said, and I mean this very sincerely, we have the best engineering program in the entire country right here on Gary Moore in our city Bureau of Engineers. And so I'm very pleased to join with them and say to Alex and Dale, uh, we have the best and you are the best of the best. So congratulations from all of us and a sincere thanks from all Angelinos who benefit every single day from all those myriad of projects you do that touch their lives every single day. God bless you. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Gary Moore. We've talked about him, and he is the leader of the group. Good to have you, Gary. Thanks. I just want to thank uh, the councilmen for all their support and the entire council for your support. It's a real honor to uh, represent the great and fantastic and hardworking men and women. And one of the women I'd like to recognize is Jensen's wife, who also works for the Bureau of Engineering, who's seven weeks away from their first baby, who's taking photos right there. 
So uh, the Bureau of Engineering does have heart also, right, Jensen? There's a lot of heart, a lot of heart here. So thank you on behalf of all of us, and uh, we really appreciate this uh, recognition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm really honored to have uh, this award from Lacey's. And uh, just like any accomplishment, it's always a joint effort. So I would like to at least uh, acknowledge the employees of the Structural Engineering Division who have uh, supported and done all the work. So with that, I thank them, and I thank you for the award. Uh, I'm very honored to re receive this award, and uh, I'm very uh, happy to work with the greatest Bureau of Engineering. Uh, I'm still learning, so uh, this is going to be a uh, big uh, stepping stone for me, and hopefully in the future I will have a, a better accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Mr. Rosendahl. Uh, next, Mr. Labonge, and then Mr. Wiesar. Oh, so, I'm sorry, Mr. Wiesar wanted to add his Real good wishes quick, on this Mr. one. Mr. Garcetti, I yes, also too just want to give a big thank you to Gary and all the team. You guys are doing a wonderful job. The Boyle Heights Technology Center just opened up in my district a gem in a community that desperately needed it, but you were there committed, not only doing the numbers and the stats, but involving yourself, keeping the community updated. That's so important. And like Mr. Cardenas was alluding to earlier, you know, our engineers, sometimes we see them as very straight shooting people just concerned with numbers. But here, I think we have a team. When you talk to them about projects in communities, you guys really care, and that's important. And you guys are working with the communities to make these projects possible. Thank you so much for the work you do. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Rosendahl, Mr. Cardenas, Mr. Smith, Gary Lebor, all the engineers, I just recall that there's a wonderful sign sometimes around some of our interchange, named after the engineers who designed them, which is so important. And uh, I, I remember when I used to take my aunt, who, who is a nun who's now in heaven, out to the airport where she would go somewhere. She would always, with a great pride, announce that it was a woman who designed the 405 and the 10, the Santa Monica freeway in the San Diego and it was and it, it, it's just a great honor to see engineers be honored and I think it's great Tony that you talk about it as you do because of your experience and great from your leadership and Bill as the head of chair because without the engineers we'd be dust thank you thank you very much Mr. Labonge and Mr. Labonge is our next presenter followed by Mr. Wiesar Good morning, everybody. On behalf of Council Member Ed Reyes, it's my honor, really, to s stand here and make a very special presentation for the Chinatown Queen and her court as we come close to celebrating Lunar New Year, which will be held this Sunday, February 18th. This year, it's year 4,705. And for those of you who are aware, it may be uh, the special uh, boar is that uh, animal is this year the boar in 4,705. Let's give them all a big welcome right now. Herb, come and join me right now, huh? Legend has it in ancient times, Buddha asked that animals to meet him on Chinese New Year. Well, 12 came and the Buddha came back each year after each one with a name. He announced that people born in each of the animal's years would have some of that animal's personality. Well, if you were born in the year of war, you tend to have an excellent manner, make and keep friends, work very hard. You are honest and gallant. And you may be short-tempered and impulsive, but you also affectionate and kind. But beware, do not marry one who is in the same cycle as that, or it may lead to strife. That is what they would give us some advice there. Lucille Ball, Humphrey Bogart, Wolfgang Mozart, Ernest Hemingway, and David Letterman were well, all born in the year of the boar. And with that, I know last night, Dave Letterman is no boar. He was quite good last night <laughs> as I stayed up there. But members, each year, Mr. Reyes has the honor to celebrate this Chinese New Year. And what's great about Los Angeles, and we say it all the time, that from San Pedro to Chatsworth, from Eagle Rock to Venice, we have great neighborhoods. And in Chinatown here, they very special keep up the tradition with the great parade that is coming. 
And they also celebrate in these days ahead with little firecrackers, safe firecrackers, to uh, give away the uh, ancient Chinese tradition to keep away evil spirits. But these days lead up to this grand celebration also could, uh, continue an annual tradition here at City Hall. That tradition, of course, is that each year, Mr. Reyes has the honor, and I in his stead today, to welcome the new Miss Chinatown and her court to our council chambers. So please join in doing that. Sponsored by the Chinese Chamber of Commerce each year, Miss Chinatown contest draws some of the brightest women who throughout the region to see that they have the honor of representing Chinatown at numerous formal functions and informal functions. But behind me today, we have the women who not only have big dreams, but are well on their way to achieving them. They're aspiring doctors and lawyers, entrepreneurs, teachers, educators who currently some of them own and operate their own businesses. We have women who have graduated from some of the finest universities, including UC Riverside. But before we introduce them and to the queen in their court, I wanted to ask Chester Chong, president, yes, right you. here. Chester, give the president a big hand right here. Michael Jin, the parade chairperson, and Everett Wong, the Lunar New Year festival chairperson of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce, to say a few words. Yes, uh, Michael, uh, Chester, come yes, on up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. You. Hi, my name is Michael Jin, and uh, I'm on, on behalf of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce. I am proud to represent uh, our group as this year's parade chair. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the City of Los Angeles, the Council uh, District here, um, friends like uh, Councilman Labonge, and uh, especially C Council District One and. Um, Ed Reyes for all their support in, in helping make our parade a reality. As you may know, uh, the Golden Dragon Parade is the largest parade in the city of Los Angeles with over 100,000 people coming out to the parade. We have over 100 um, uh, units including uh, bands, cultural groups, and uh, floats that are part of the parade. And actually, this year's parade is going to be Saturday, February 24th. So not, not, not this coming week, but the following week. Um, and uh, th the parade will be in Chinatown on Hill Street and Broadway. And we also have a festival that will be on Cesar Chavez and Broadway uh, on the corner at the end of the parade route. So this year, uh, again, uh, Saturday, February 24th, will be the Chinese New Year's Parade starting at 2 o'clock, 2 to 5 o'clock. And then we also have our festival Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday, it will be uh, 10, to s 10, 10, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Saturday and 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday. So we look forward to having everyone there. Uh, if you need more information, you can find it on our website, which is uh, lagoldendragonparade.com. Uh, so thanks again. We, we look forward to having everyone there. Thank you. Yeah, all right, good. Michael, we're going to be there. How are we going to be there? Herbie going to be in that parade there? Dennis never misses a parade there. As long as they stop by, Yang Chow and Billy runs out and gives you some of that sweet and sour. But this is very special this morning as we continue here as the young lady who was selected to represent Chinatown, Miss Laura Chung, who's an entrepreneur herself, a graduate, again, from the University of Riverside, and has her own PR firm. Please welcome Miss Chinatown, Laura Chung. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. President and Council Members. Thank you so much for having us. On behalf of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce, I would like to say Happy Chinese New Year's. This is my fourth princess, Annie Ma, and Miss... What school? UCLA. UCLA. She attends UCLA right now for a med degree. And this is Miss Mandarin Wu, Miss Photogenic. She has her own dance company. So I hope to see you all at the parade on the 24th. Thank you so much. Well, we have some very special people right down here we want you to introduce, too. Oh. Your uh, duties as a <laughs> queen of Chinatown Parade, you must also introduce these special little royalties. So with us today, we have? It is my pleasure. Little King, Preston Chang. Hey, Preston, good job. Little Queen, Laura. Little Prince Darren Chan, 
and Little Princess, Leanna Sito Chin. This is a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful day to come to Chinatown, and we Mr. have someone Zine. who wants to say something. Mr. Zine wants to add his good wishes and talk about Yang Chao, I think. Thank you. Thank you. I attended the uh, dinner this past weekend, the Lantern Festival at Empress Pavilion, and I think there were some familiar faces here that were there. Um, and it's a very significant time in the Chinese calendar. I know last year was Year of the Dog, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I'm getting out of the doghouse, which is good. It took a year to do that. And now at 4705, uh, we're now the year of the boar. And all of the activities, and I was at the parade last year, and it's a wonderful activity for people to come out and see. Uh, the, the court that uh, is in the parade, all the celebrities that are in the parade. And it is just a wonderful tribute to the community that we have and this diversity in the city of Los Angeles that we can bring people together and share in those customs that they share in their homeland. So I uh, plan to be there. And uh, Empress Pavilion hosted a lovely dinner this past Sunday, and I was happy to be there and to be honored at that particular dinner with some other elected officials. So carry on, and uh, for all of Los Angeles, you can take from the San Fernando Valley, the orange line, to the red line. You don't have to worry about parking. Take public transit and uh, come on down and enjoy. It's a wonderful opportunity for everyone to see the culture at their best and to all the festivities. And I love when they start that, the fireworks. It, it's like thousands and thousands of firecrackers that go off as they kick off the parade. So with all that wonderful activity, so we congratulate you. 4705, the year of the board. Happy New Year. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank Zion. You. This wraps it up. We say yoy fa choy to everybody in that beautiful poster here with the City Hall and the highlights. Let's give all the representatives of Chinatown a big hand and everybody come on the 24th. Thank you very much, Mr. LaBange. And congratulations to the court. Wonderful to have you here. Our next presentation will be from uh, Council District 14, Councilmember Jose Wizar. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And colleagues, just a little while ago, I recognized the Igrok High School Jazz Band for its incredible talent. Now I'm here to proudly congratulate and present to you the Eagle Rock High School football team, a group that was cheered by the jazz team and many others, and congratulate them for their two-peat in their CIF Invitational City Championship. Congratulations, Eagle Rock High School. Eagle Rock High School football team made history last year when it won its first CIF championship in how long? Ever. Ever. And how long has the school been around? 78 years, right? 27. 27. 1927. Since 1927. This year they made history again by having their most winning, winningest football season in the history of Eagle Rock High School. They're doing something great there. The athletes are great, but we also have a great coach. Coach Jerry Chow was the CIF Coach of the Year. Congratulations, Coach Chow. And with that... I want to present to Coach Chow a certificate of recognition for being the CIF Coach of the Year and for bringing such spirit to Eagle Rock community and the Eagle Rock High School and for really cultivating the talents of these young people we see right behind us. Congratulations, Coach Chow. Thank you. Mr. LaBange. To the Eagles of Eagle Rock, congratulations. You worked very hard uh, throughout the year. And it's great to see a big football team here and a great uh, drill team and the support for the cheerleading squad and everybody. It's uh, hard work. You started long in the early part of the summer, but it pays off and now uh, you're city champs. They can't take it away from you. You broke my heart. I'm using my heart a lot today. Twice. A, hard, a third time now. We heart, heart, a big heart for the manual arts engineers. But you <laughs> broke my heart a year ago in the last two seconds when you beat my alma mater, Marshall. But congratulations to Eagle Rock. You're very well deserved young people. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, 
Well, the Eagles won their second consecutive championship in great fashion. With less than five minutes to go in the game, they recovered a fumble and returned it down for a touchdown. They never looked back, winning the game 21-17 and keeping the championship in Eagle Rock. The defensive back who recovered that fumble, Joshua Giovanelli, is also the co Giovanelli. 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 There you go. Italiano. Italiano. Is also, but get this, despite me not being able to pronounce his name, the important thing is that he was the co city player of the year. I'll call him Josh now, that makes it easier. Josh also scored the winning touchdown in the Eagles 2005 championship game. We remember that one very well as well. So congratulations and congratulations to Josh. He will be accepting the certificate of recognition on behalf of the Eagles football team. Congratulations and congratulations to you, Josh. <laughs> Uh, on behalf of everybody at Eagle Rock High School and just the town of Eagle Rock, we just want to say thank you to everybody here at City Hall. Um, we, last year and this year as well, we've been warmly receptive by you as always, and we just appreciate all the support you've given us, and we're going to need it as always for years to come because we want to come back here next year and the year after that. So thank you very much. <laughs> And finally, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a great principal at Eagle Rock High School, Salvador Velasco, who is doing great things. You can see not only supporting our athletes, but supporting our jazz group and supporting our students inside the classroom. That's testament to the great leadership that Mr. Velasco is doing. Please help me in welcoming and congratulating Mr. Salvador Velasco for the great work he's doing as principal of Eagle Rock High School. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Wiesar. Congratulations to everybody. Great to have you here. Oh, Mr. Velasco is going to yes. say a few words. Mr. Velasco. Uh, thank you. And for the record, if I look fat and ugly, it's because of the beautiful people you had before us here. All right? I'm not, I don't look this way. In, in any case, I, I do want to thank you because now I have proved that Eagle Rock is part of Los Angeles. Every time I go on vacation, I tell Eagle Rock, oh yeah, we're part of Los Angeles. They say, no, you, your name is Eagle Rock. How can you be part of Los Angeles? Now I have proved that we are. I do, I do want to thank especially uh, Mr. Wieser and his staff for making it possible throughout the year for our school to get the support that we need at, in that part of Los Angeles. It's, it's been uh, often time. A need that we have that we call our um, football mother and we say, you know, maybe you can help us out by uh, going over and uh, talking to our councilman and Ms. Munoz, Gladys Munoz, always there, say, I'll, I'll be talking to Mr. Wizard and he will be helping us out, I can assure you. And we are grateful for that. A specific for today, I do want to thank all the city leaders here for taking the time and making it very clear that hard work and diligence is recognized. For you to take the time of uh, city business, for you to take the time and tell the students that it is important to work hard and that eventually you will be recognized. This, this moment today, the memories will go on our hearts for a long, long time, and I want to thank you for that. Thank, uh, and I also thank all the, all the rest of the staff that make this uh, moment happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, I want to congratulate these wonderful athletes and students we see behind us, all the staff of Eagle Rock High School, the teachers, the coaches, and also the community of Eagle Rock. There's a lot of great things happening in this great community. This high school, this football team, this wonderful caring adults at the school are making a difference in this great community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Wiesar, and congratulations again. Uh, Mr. Smith. Seven out of order so we can dispose of it quickly. Okay, number 27. There's no objection. Please. 
Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. Uh, we have worked uh, to get some alternative language that we brought forward this morning. Mr. Parks has not had a chance to read it. Would like to see it as the voting member SCAG. And Mr. Reyes, who's chairman of the committee, hasn't a chance to see it. So we're asking for a one-week continuance on 27 so we can let the staff go. Okay. If there's no objection to continuing item 27, that would be one week till the 23rd of February. So ordered. And for folks who had cards, uh, we can come back um, next week and you can, we will have the public hearing on that item. Thank you. Mr. Parks? Uh, Mr. President, can we get number 10 reconsidered and continue to next Tuesday? Number like 10? To, yeah, number okay, 10. I'd like to ask Mr. Simon to come in and make a presentation. He's not available today. Okay. Uh, there's no objection to reconsideration. Let's open the roll on number 10 to reconsider. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 10 ayes. Okay. That is before us. If there's no objection, that will be continued till next Tuesday, also Who's the 20th. Tuesday, Tuesday, no. Okay. Oh, sorry. We don't have counsel on Tuesday. Um, Correct, next Wednesday. That would be the 21st. Uh, okay. And um, if we can now go to public comment, please. And I will just uh, take the first speakers here for public comment. Um, first out in the San Fernando Valley, Zuma Dog. What's up? Yeah, what? Is it they call my name? Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Dog. Thank you. Well, where am I, y'all? Yeah, yeah. Come on, why start talking when there's no visual to hold up Zoom it, dog? If I can ask LA you to just Weekly. keep your voice down a little bit. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Because I want to make sure this sounds good, y'all. Because Zoom it, dog, off the streets of Venice, I walked into City Hall about 11 months ago to protest an illegal, unconstitutional ban of vending on Venice. When I came into City Hall, I found out about all the shady corruption, fraud, waste, and abuse. Thank you to the constituents. And now, on newsstands everywhere, Zuma Dog's article on SCAG. You just heard Parks continue it till next week, and you can read all about it this week in LA Weekly. Zuma Dog's article on SCAG, y'all, yeah, yeah. It's city business, y'all, so why not just read a little bit out of my own article, y'all? It should win a Pulitzer Prize, y'all. This is an obscure group. Oh, it's pretty hard hitting, y'all. I don't want to talk about it, but I did was also like to thank everybody in CD14. Oh, by the way, LAWeekly.com, too, for Zuma Dog's article on SCAG, talking about the region. Y'all 15 council members are part of SCAG. But now let's talk about CD4. Oh, Miriam is here. Come on, Miriam. Yeah, yeah, if we got a celebrity the in the house. Items that are before us, please, or something under yeah, yeah, Oh, uh, it's thank general you. public comment, but I'd like to thank everybody in CD14. Zuma Dog hosted a candidate forum. It's going to be posted on YouTube. It's going to be Eagle Rock. You can watch it on Eagle Rock. Your council member didn't attend, but that's okay. We had a scarecrow straw dummy on a stick that stood in for Jose Wezar. And you can hear a lot about the debates. Juan Jimenez and Alvin Parra, they will provide answers, great answers. And they both did a fantastic job. And, you know, Zuma Dog does feel blessed. I had to make the trip all the way across the city to the CD14. That's on YouTube. And, again, I'm just... Yeah, yeah. L.A. Weekly, Zuma Dog's article on Skag, y'all. And oh, fix the clock, y'all. You want to build a subway to the sea? You want to transform the schools? You want to build Grand Avenue? Will you fix the damn clock? Please fix the clock. I'm begging you. Thank you. I'm Your time you. is up, sir. We appreciate your comments, Mr. Uh, Dog. Our next speaker is Sharon Brewer. Oops. Welcome. Hi, um, Sharon Brewer, CD6, ongoing issues at Lake Balboa, some on a daily basis. Public safety, bikes, roller skates, gas-powered scooters on walk path, illegally parked cars on the grass, parked on the wrong side of the road, going the wrong way. Dogs off leash, chasing the wildlife. People fishing without a fishing license, leaving line and hooks on ground. Birds injured and sometimes killed by fishing line and hooks. CD6, three and a half years ago, your office was contacted by me about existing problems at Lake Balboa Park. On a monthly basis for three and a half years, your deputy has been told about the continuing problems at Lake Balboa. You personally have been told by me about the problems at Lake Balboa during public comment. I have also shown pictures of some of the problems during public comment. I have asked you to help with these problems numerous times, and you have ignored my request numerous times for your help. It is your responsibility as a councilman for CD6 to do whatever you can to make sure Lake Balboa Park is a safe place for all people, all the people who go to the park and all the wildlife that inhabit Lake Balboa. As of today, you have failed to do anything about these problems. It is also your responsibility to make sure that the public is never kept, kept out 
by a, an event promoter from enjoying Lake Balboa, a city park. Yet last year, UN Recreation and Parks allowed the Persian New Year event promoter to close a portion of Lake Balboa to the public. The public had to pay this event promoter $5 each to access a public park. The $5 fee went to the promoter, not the city. Once again, this event is planned for April 1st at Lake Balboa, entire basin, according to Recreation and Parks outdoor calendar of events. I want you, CD6, to show me in writing where it states that a city park can be closed to the public unless they pay a fee to an event pro promoter. I know for a fact that the, for the past three years, this event has caused traffic problems, parking problems, trash and litter problems, including trash in the lake, which empties into the LA River. Um, I will be back. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brewer. Our next speaker is here in City Hall, uh, Arnold Sachs. Is Mr. Sachs here? There he is. And after that will be Candido Maris. Good morning. Good morning, council members. Thank you very much. My name is Arnold Sachs. Um, I was here at the meeting on 2707, and item number 28 came up, uh, communications from the chair regarding uh, to the city attorney for, um, relative to advice to letter for a letter to the Department of Neighborhoods Empowerment regarding neighborhood councils having the ability to put on their own Congress of neighborhood. And I was just curious to find out if that's the same city attorney that was um, offered his advice to this city council um, via communication last year regarding how irregular it was for the council to put on uh, two unrelated items on the November ballot, and what was the city council's response to the city attorney's advice regarding that item? I, I find it highly, um, sorry, I'm thinking of, I find it highly unethical that the city council should ask for the city attorney's advice and when it doesn't follow its own city attorney's advice that it gives that when the city attorney gives it advice and it, does, it fails to follow that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Candido Morris. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, council members. I believe Ms. Gruel has left, but I want to thank you, uh, council members and Ms. Gruel, especially for bringing forth uh, heart awareness. As someone who has suffered with the heart condition in the last two years and who now takes five medications, um, if somebody would have just warned me back about eight or nine years ago, I probably wouldn't be in the situation that I'm in today. So thank you very much for making that, uh, the public aware of that. Uh, also, Mr. Garcetti, one of the things that when you are ill and you're at home, you get to watch television. And I want to thank you and, and for making dreams come true. Hollywood is going to be revitalized. Hollywood and Vine. I used to live in Hollywood in uh, 75 and 76. And at that time, everybody was running away from Hollywood. You remember that? Everybody said, we'll never go back to the great days. And you, sir, are bringing those back. The Yucca uh, Community Center, it's a combination of everything. And what you're doing is giving us hope in Van Nuys that one day we'll be able to revitalize Van Nuys Boulevard. We'll be able to build a, um, a senior center in Arlita. Thank you for the hope that you've uh, given us. So appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Morris. Our next speaker is Patrick Duff. And then Sylvia Lynn Hawkins will be after that. Welcome, Mr. Duff. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm actually here to speak about medical marijuana uh, dispensaries in the city. Um, I have owned and operated a dispensary in the city for well over a year now. And since the, um, let's say, implementation of certain websites and advertising um, things in Rolling Stones, there has been a great California gold rush. And I believe the current plan that you have um, in, in order now that you're going to do is not only going to cause another gold rush that's been going this entire year, but it's going to cause, um, it's kind of like giving us enough rope to hang ourselves with. And what happens is just a couple weeks ago, the federal government decided they were going to come in and raid 11 dispensaries and not arrest one person. And that's a warrantless search, or that, that's, a, that's a search and seizure without somebody being given their due process of law and their day in court. Now what I'm asking for the city council to do is to put a, uh, a temporary ban on providing any more licensing on new dispensaries until there are regulations formed by the city council and the planning commission. The planning commission's job is to, um, just like the engineer's job, is to make sure things are built the correct way. 
And when they're not built the correct way, they'll fall down. And what I'm here to tell you is I've run several of these places, and I'm on one of the boards of, of, of the commission to, let's say, regulate these co-ops, and some of them are already on their way down because people didn't know what type of investment they're getting themselves into. And what I'm thinking is if you put out your 30-day open call um, to people, you're not only going to get a gold rush, you're going to get people that are going to lose their lifelong investments because they're going into a, a business or, or something they have no idea what they're getting themselves into. So this is the only city so far that has yet to act or enact anything. Um, and this is the city where the greatest number of them are, are, are opened. So I think you guys really need to rethink your plan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker is Sylvia Lynn Hawkins. And then uh, we'll go back to Van Nuys for Miriam Fogler. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, President-elect, uh, this is to Superintendent Brewer. We must at this time work on teachers' treatment to students of attacks and, and no anger control of teachers. This kind of hiring teachers with such out of order behavior and character with a 6% increase is out of order. With an out of order bank account, with the public people, or if you call them private people, money will not work. It is, again, it can't rule with paying or, or with money from these sources of paying these teachers from different sources without the city hall directing. They can't do this with this type of anger, which is directed toward teachers. I do believe as we begin to hire that we must not just look at the grade and, and college that they went to, but we must keep in order the behavior and character of all teachers. I'm asking superintendent to be very cautious concerning teachers, behavior and character. We cannot just hire anybody off the street. We don't care what degrees they have. If they do not have self-control over anger and the students is pumping them in anger, then it is called they are not qualified to be teachers. Thank you very much. My name is Hawkins. Thank you, Ms. Hawkins. We'll next go to Van Nuys. Uh, Miriam Fogler is next, and then Bruce Darian. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hello. 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 I wanted to tell you that I'm watching all you people, even though I've been on the international scene, that you're trying to pass a bond on the people for paying for gangs when you can pay, uh, pave way for a big project as the Grand View, uh, Grand Avenue Hotel. This is a ripoff to the whole downtown. You're going to put all the jewelry places, you're going to put all those businesses out, you're going to put all those people out. All of them are going to be unemployed. You're going to all have to find other places to live because you people are going to bring this project in and, you, and just ransack the whole place. No parking for people to come down there. You want them all to depend on MTA, including all you people should be depending on all MTA if that's what you want to do. Take it from uh, the man, the great uh, Ernie Bernardi. I used to go to his meetings when I used to live in Van Nuys many years ago. I'm talking to CD6 right now. I told your office yesterday you need to oppose the CRA projects now because we cannot afford it. We're paying, uh, uh, paying for all these bonds that we're passing sky high because we have a simple majority vote. You people changed from two thirds. You made sure to that so that uh, you know we can continue to raise taxes on the people and burden them more and more and more. I don't know why this seems to be human behavior that uh, I can't see you people's reaction. I, you know, I don't know what you're, you're listening to me or not here. We're listening. I continue. hope you are, because if you don't, it's going to come back and bite you in your own yourself. What comes around comes back. Bruce Darian is Can our I next speaker. Can I have more time? Go ahead, Mr. Darian. Uh, Council President Garcetti, Councilwoman Gruel, Councilwoman Hahn, and the City Council, I want to thank you for supporting the resolution of 106, Congress's resolution that the Armenian Genocide took place as an Armenian, American Armenian. Um, I know the Armenian <coughs> community is thankful that uh, there's leadership here and that this is taking place, and we'll hopefully move uh, through the Congress. 
Um, I'd like to point out that uh, Council President Garcetti said yesterday that we cannot erase history and that uh, when a, every time a lie is told, we must speak the truth. As you know, I've been here for many months over the Malibu Pier, which has been a lie, and not in any way to, to correlate it or put it together with the atrocity of the Armenian Genocide. But I would like to point out that the truth must be told on that as well. And once again, I'd like to thank the City Council for taking the leadership and voting unanimously to uh, support this resolution. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you very much. That closes our general public comment. If we can go to the Mr. Labange, I have your button pressed. I'm sorry. Did you want to say something? Okay. If we can go to the uh, first item on the agenda, please. First item, call specials, item number 12, and that was called special by Council Member Wiesar. Okay. I think he's asked for us to hold that on the desk. We can go to the next one. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Parks? 14 forthwith. 14 if the uh, – it's been called special by Ms. Gruel, so we haven't – oh, we did pass it? Okay. My apologies. We will – Send that then forthwith. There's no objection. Next item. Uh, next item is item number 41, and that was called special for a card from the public. Okay. I th we have cards on 41, 42, and 43. Mr. Uh, Dog, if you'd like to address those three. <clears throat> what, do you, what, what do you want me to do them all at the same time? Yeah, go ahead. You can do them in sequence. Oh, so like six minutes or whatever? I'll, I'll probably. That's a maximum of five. Less. So we'll give you five minutes, and you can just space yourself. Okay. All right. Start the clock. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't have one. So anyway, number 41, that is relative to authorizing acceptance of $150,000 to fund Venice Grand Canal restoration. <laughs> Bill Rosendahl, please, City Council, tell Bill Rosendahl the last thing they need to spend $150,000 on is restorating some canal in Venice. It's not like you can even use it. It's not a viable transportation thing. No, 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 no. You got people, you put some unconstitutional 4215, you got people homeless, you got people that can't feed their kids, you got people going on welfare for the first time, you got more homeless ever in Venice, you got to pass all kinds of new laws to try to get rid of them, you got gang crime, you got unsafe streets for the kids, and you want to spend $150,000 to restore the canals of Venice. What a shame, what a crock, shame on you, Bill Rosendahl. That's just if you could address the council thing. as a whole, please, and if you could keep your voice down, please, Mr. Dog. All right. Thank you. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm not, anyway, here's what I'd like to say, City Council. I would like you to vote no on this item, because the last thing that we need to spend $150,000 on is some yuppie canals that have no relevance. Great. So that Julia Roberts could have a nicer view. We got gang problems. We got homeless people. We got people that can't feed the kids, all because of your 4215 ordinance, City Council. All right, so I say no to this. Now let me move on to the next thing, y'all. You're listening to Zoom and Dog State of the City right now, running big things on TV 35. 42, approval of a street banner program for the neighbor. Oh, okay, Studio City Neighborhood Council. They want to approve a street banner program, and I say you should approve a street banner for Neighborhood Council because we need the people in the area to be aware of where Neighborhood Council is because they're trying to pass a law to make Neighborhood Council exempt from the Brown Act and the city attorney, city of Schmerny, Rocky Delgadillo goes along with that. And so we need people to get to these Neighborhood Councils and take the city back, all right? So yes, put a thing up there so people can go to Neighborhood Council and Zuma Dog would like to say that everyone agrees we need more participation in Neighborhood Councils because it's tough to get respect with the big boys up there in the 15 seats because they're saying, well, gee, you're voting on things with two people in the room. So let's get some more participation so it can strengthen the input powers of Neighborhood Council because the city's being taken away. And now they're trying to take claim exemption from the Brown Act. So show up and protest about the claim and exemption of the Brown Act because if they make that exemption, then you can't go down there to protest anymore. And then we're back from square one, y'all. Now, number 43 on the real estate. Final track maps. All right, you're listening to Zoom and Dog State of the City running through all the shady agenda items right here now. And I'd like to say we got two final track maps. Now, here's the thing. Zuma Dog just did a thing on the state of the region, and the city's bursting at the seams. It's bursting at the seams. You're building high, you're, you're, here, you're building these track maps. This is blueprint to high density, y'all. These are blueprints to high density. They're supposed to be ICOs. You're supposed to be looking at vacancy rates. You're supposed to be looking at affordable housing components. And I bet none of y'all know if any of that's even a part of this track map. And the infrastructure can't handle these high density projects. 
I'm very sorry to say the city is at maximum capacity. The infrastructures can't handle it. You might be able to pack a bunch of people into a 40-story apartment complex, and that's all well and good and fine and dandy. But then you, the streets are, can't accommodate the traffic. There's no parking. The water, there's not going to be enough water. The Colorado River don't flow forever, y'all. And the DWP can't accommodate with the infrastructure pipes. And then the schools, they can't accommodate. You're trying to reduce class size. Every time you approve one of these high-density track maps, then the schools get more overcrowded when we're trying to undercrowd them, y'all. And then the police, there's too many people in the neighborhoods. You keep raising fees for police, but we don't see the police on the street. Zuma Dog says, where's the beat? So we can't accommodate these. So Zuma Dog would like to say, please vote no on item 43A, y'all, until we can have a moratorium on all high-density buildings in the city, y'all, because the infrastructures can't accommodate it, y'all. And um, I'd like to just reiterate again, y'all, I got more time. You, you, you know what? I'm going to be a good boy, y'all. I said what I had to say. I'm not going to abuse it by going on too long. I covered three things, and you can see them on YouTube. And thank you so much, City Council. Zoomadog, laweekly.com. Thank you. Uh, Mr. City Attorney? And just for the record, the approval of a final track map is a ministerial duty the council is required to do on these two items. Thank you. Um, anybody wishing to be heard on this? Mr. Smith? Is you 43, we request it continues to Wednesday. We do have one opportunity to continue to Wednesday, okay. and then we must act. Okay. We're exploring the other options. So I ask 43 be continued to Wednesday. We will close the public hearing on that, um, and then we will uh, continue if there's no objection B. until B. Wednesday the 21st um, on item 43. That leaves us 41 and 42. If we can and, and Mr. President, that is actually 43B is going to be continued, and then uh, the one in Council District 12, the other one can go forward. Okay, okay. we'll take the other then. Please open the roll on the balance. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Uh, item number 12 is on the desk, and that was called special by Council Member Weezar. Mr. Weezar, we have item number 12 for us. Uh, we could hear from public comment first. Is that okay with you, Mr. President? We've got first um, Clarissa Wu to come forward, and that will be Susie Shannon next. And after that will be Yolanda James. Good morning. Good morning. Thank, thank you very much for having us, council members. My name is Clarissa Wu, and I'm the senior policy coordinator at the ACLU of Southern California. We he are here today to express our support of council member Jose Huizar and council president Eric Garcetti's resolution to oppose the governor's proposed $324 million cuts in CalWORKs benefits and other changes to the CalWORKs program for children of welfare parents. The American Civil Liberties Union is one of the nation's leading advocates for individual liberty and equality, and through our work in the courts, through legislation and public education, we fight to defend the Constitution for each generation and to extend those rights to groups who have traditionally been denied them. Um, we recognize that liberty and equality are shaped by both economic and legal realities. And in this way, we work to oppose proposed budget cuts that target social services for safety net programs. As these cuts are introduced every year, we continue to fight for equal access and ensuring services for populations who are traditionally underserved, such as the disabled, elderly, and the poor. The governor's proposal to cut off general assistance to all children whose parents do not meet minimum CalWORKs requirements are unnecessary and unreasonable. In addition, the Terminating assistance to children after five years is also a misinformed proposal. Such punitive changes have no um, proven effect to increase work participation rates or strengthen the ability of families to achieve self-sufficiency. And this elimination of funding would affect an estimated of 480,000 families statewide, which will devastate families who are already struggling to make ends meet. These cuts will drive more and more vulnerable families into homelessness, resulting in increased costs for both the city and the county. Thank you for your time. We urge you to approve this resolution and support this resolution to protect our vulnerable families. Thank you. Susie Shannon. Hi, thank you, council members. I'm Susie Shannon. I'm the executive director of Poverty Matters. We uh, advocate on behalf of low-income families, and we pro provide direct nighttime services to the homeless on Skid Row. 
Um, we strongly support this resolution brought forward by Councilmember Wezar and commend him for this. Uh, we oppose the governor's cuts to the CalWORKS program. CalWORKS is cash assistance for the neediest children in California and the adults who care for them. This budget cuts the CalWORKS cost of living increase for the third consecutive year. We know that when public assistance programs are not set at levels where families can afford food and shelter, that these families end up homeless. No parent should have to choose between feeding their children and providing a roof over their head. In 2005, 9% of the homeless families in the county of Los Angeles were on CalWORKS, so we already know that this program is insufficient for providing food and shelter to families. This budget would throw an additional 55,000 families off of CalWORKS statewide. For our city and for our children, we strongly encourage you to support this resolution. Thank you. And also to Councilmember Garcetti, who also supported the motion. Thank you. Yolanda James. Good morning. I'm here to ask that you propose this budget cut that the governor is proposing on CalWORKS parents. Okay. Like myself, I've been self-sufficiency for the last six and a half years coming into the Los Angeles Coalition as a welfare advocate. I've learned so much. I'm all across Los Angeles educating parents on their rights of welfare. and. You know, it's hard for parents, single parents, and I'm a parent that does not want to become homeless again with these cuts just by missing school or my son is sick. You know, I think we have lived up into the self-sufficiency role. We just need a little more help. And I'm asking Governor Schwarzenegger to give us the cost of living adjustment that we need so badly and not to put this pressure on families or single parents to make us homeless again and think about our kids i have three single three small kids and just to take them through the ringer again of being homelessness or to indulge these cuts again is really crazy to live this life again which i worked so hard to be self-sufficiency that's what i want to say thank you you're welcome thank you uh, kenneth james good morning I'm here on behalf of Mrs. James, as she has already stated a fact about CalWORKS and the things that we know that um, there are homeless individuals and the population is growing each and every day. But I just want to also just read a poem, and it's about the daughter's silent cry. A daughter's silent cry leads us to wonder if there is any hope or future, taking matters into her hands and saying to herself, it's all right. I can make it, but soon a drop of tear fall from her face. Anger sets in and voice begin to speak. Why, Mom, why did you leave me so unattended? In my reflection of you, can you see me as you? A question set into her mind, then she realized again, this too shall pass. While the sound of her cry sets in as her days seem long, and she is doing all she know how to keep happiness deep inside, she remembers bits and bits of her mother, while her, mo her memories fade away. She said into her heart, can life be fair? No guidance, no direction, just taking over somebody else's responsibility. Why me? Don't I deserve a future? Hope and dream has passed me by, and I'm standing here with a silent cry. Thank you. You're welcome, and thank you. Uh, final speaker of uh, the public will be uh, Joseph Yella. Uh, hi, my name is Joseph Villela. I'm here representing CHIRLA, the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights of Los Angeles. Uh, we'd also like to thank uh, Councilmember Wisa for his leadership on this issue. It's really critical for us. Um, and also President Garcetti for supporting this motion. Uh, I'd just like to reiterate how important this motion is. Uh, we need to send a strong message to Sacramento and to the governor that uh, Los Angeles County needs uh, will and will support uh, working families. It will not let the governor target uh, children who are the most vulnerable in our society. Instead of that, we need to invest in them. We need to provide them with equal, uh, with living wage, which you know we already did. Uh, and so we urge you to support this uh, this motion put forward by Assembly Member, by Council Member uh, Jose Wizar and President Garcetti. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Council Member Garcetti. Council Member Jose Wizar, you'll go first. 
very much. And first, I want to thank the speakers who came out today to testify on this issue, a very important issue. And colleagues, there's a lot of proposals in the governor's budget, some we like, some we don't like. But when I saw that this is one that specifically targets our young people, very needy young people, people who are making, whose parents are making a choice between feeding them or putting housing and are very low income, we had to stand up and do something about it. I want to thank the Intergovernmental Relations Committee for unanimously supporting this. And today, as a council, I urge all my colleagues to support it unanimously to let the governor know that it's just not right to target and focus on some of our most vulnerable citizens of this state. We all know how important it is that we support these families and, through no fault of their own, penalize these children who, because the parents may not have filled something out or done, qualified, done every, crossed every uh, T, dotted every I, these children will not have money to eat or their parents would not have sufficient resources to provide housing. On an economic level, the city of Los Angeles should be concerned with this because if we don't have the resources provided to these families and these young kids, they will be on our street. And here we are as a city constantly talking about how will we be dealing with the homelessness issue. And more importantly, we keep talking about how our Skid Row area and other services do not focus on families and kids. There was a national televised programming not about a month ago talking about how our Skid Row fails to address the needs of kids on our, on our, in our streets. This is something, whether for moral reasons or economic reasons, we have to send a strong message, I was mentioned, up to Sacramento and the governor that we will not tolerate this and we're going to defend our children's right to eat and have a roof over their heads. Thank you very much for your support on these colleagues. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Garcetti. Kudos, Mr. Wiesar, and the children and, and families of Los Angeles owe you a debt of gratitude for putting this forward and for immediately not only catching that, but making sure that the city um, is at the front of the line in asking the governor um, or state legislature more likely to repeal the governor's proposal vis-a-vis um, -vis CalWORKs uh, recipients. Um, and thank you for asking me to, to, to join you with it. It's, you know, the issue of homelessness, which so poignantly was put forward and which you as well uh, very articulately mentioned, is just one of the issues that's affected by this. We talk a lot about gang and youth violence here in the city right now. And when we look at what leads people to uh, violent um, youth uh, experiences, it's often because they grow up in the sort of poverty that we cannot and must not allow to move forward with this proposal. You know, we've had 25 years of attacks on the idea of welfare, something which had bipartisan support and expansion throughout the 60s and 70s when we believed that part of our democracy was to have a social safety net. Uh, it started when President Reagan mentioned a, the idea of a welfare queen, described her in a State of Union address, and it turned out that woman never even existed. It was a creation um, of his own political advisors, a woman that became a symbol um, of the, an anti-government philosophy that wanted to dismantle that safety net. And when we look even at the 90s, both Democrats and Republicans alike hailing welfare reform as a success, we've actually seen a lot of people forced off the rolls and it's counted as a success. And this is another example of that same thing. Um, Democrats are no more innocent uh, than Republicans in some of the work that has happened in the last 15 years to dismantle the most basic uh, infrastructure. The myths about welfare recipients that they have more kids than other people, it's false. They actually have fewer children than other families. The myths about their attitudes towards marriage and towards work are false. They adhere more conservatively towards work and marriage ethics than average Americans. All of these things which have little by little created an enemy that is not even there because it is our brothers and sisters, our children, who are the ones who need this money, we now must say here in California that we should not let this slip through, particularly not in good times where we have the lowest unemployment rate uh, in L.A. County in 30-something years, 31 years. But we know those jobs increasingly are poverty jobs, which is why what Ms. Hahn did with Living Wage and with Mr. Rosendahl is so critical. But we also can't let this CalWORKs um, entitlement be dried up from Los Angeles. And if you just think about it in those economic terms, Mr. Wiesar said, um, it is critical for us to have that money in our economy. This is money that people spend. We never get our fair share out of D.C. and out of Sacramento. And we certainly demand that Los Angeles have equal representation and that people be given the child care and the support to turn their lives around 
Nobody likes to be on welfare, contrary to what people may think. It is not a pleasant experience. It is not something which is easy to, uh, to live with. But not being on welfare, not having CalWORKs, is much worse for all of us. So thank you to the IGR committee, and thank you to Mr. Wiesar, and I join you very fully in support. Thank you. That matter is now before us. Open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. Thank you. And also, there's been a request on item 41 to go forthwith on 41. You You're welcome. Mr. By Mr. Rosenthal. Thank you. Next item, please. Council has motions for posting and referral. Post and referral. Council has excuses on the desk. Councilmember Parks requests to be excused Wednesday, March 28th, to arrive at 11 a.m. for city business that meets council policy. Excuse. Councilmember Rosendahl requests to be excused March 27th and 28th for city business that also meets council policy. Excused. And that clears the desk, Mr. President. Thank you. Any announcements this morning? Uh, Mr. Parks, announcement? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I uh, just would like to make a couple of announcements. The uh, uh, continuing our effort to support the uh, Black History Month events, the re organization uh, Recycling Black Dollars is having their uh, uh, major event February the 23rd uh, at the, uh, in conjunction with the Torrance uh, uh, Area Chamber of Commerce. It's the 10th annual Black History Month celebration at the Torrance Marriott. Uh, at 2 p.m. on the 23rd, and then also the uh, February 24th, the Power of Wealth uh, Builders of History Makers will have their event at Fame Renaissance at 1965 West Adams, uh, and that will be uh, uh, also sponsored by the Recycling Black Dollars. Also. Um, an internship for high school seniors and juniors in the broadcast industry. Uh, the Emma Bolden Foundation at 213, I'm sorry, 212 975 3065 is available for our students. And then the final one is the uh, American Diabetes Association African American Task Force will have their event on February 23rd through 25th and it will be a countywide issue dealing with uh, diabetes, and uh, this will be a, uh, uh, a three-day event. Thank you. Um, any other uh, announcements? Already. Uh, 27 was continued. The uh, request on 27 is continued. Next week. Uh, no other announcements? Adjourning motions. Any adjourning motions? If not, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Hardiness, Hahn, Huizar, Labange, Parks, Ray, Rosendahl, Smith, Wesson, Sign, Garcetti. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely weekend. This adjourns the City Council meeting for today. We won't be in session.